Mr. Bill, tell me, why should we here in the 21st century give one fig for Andy Warhol? This is such an interesting question. There's many, many people who think that uh, Andy Warhol was very instrumental in changing the world during the middle of the 20th century. Um, there was a transition, I believe, and this is the third installation of three installations. The first one was Jackson Pollock, the second was Jasper Johns, and this is Andy Warhol. And the three of them sort of ushered a transition from the humanist world to a world that is, I want to call it the era of empathy. Empathy is such an interesting concept. But many people think that he is, and should be, or was, the most significant artist of the 20th century. You know, at the end of the millennium, uh, uh, what is it, Time Magazine sort of named a person for every one of the 10 centuries preceding the, the shift to, into the 21st century. And they named, um, Einstein, the man of the 20th century. Well, personally, I think they made a mistake. They should have named Andy Warhol the uh, person of the 20th century. And what did he do? Um, he basically was the living antithesis, the, the, the consummate iconoclast, uh, denying and rejecting every every little bit of ethos that was the humanist, uh, regardless of their behavior, their morals, their mores, their attitudes, uh, how they lived their lives, what they thought it meant to be a human being. You know, and uh, the humanists, starting with Giotto, and by the way, I have this notion that Giotto did two things. First of all, he made his people emotive, uh, which sort of put the face of man instead of the face of God in the center of art. But I think he also liberated the, uh, the, uh, the mind, human mind. He made it a, a human-centered mind rather than a God-centered mind. He liberated the human mind from God's will. And for the, say, the first 200 years, basically humans were out to prove that in fact they were incredibly capable beings. And if you think about it, 200 years from Giotto painting the Arena Chapel in 1305, you had Michelangelo, Raphael, and Leonardo making the argument that to be human is to be magnificent. You had Copernicus uh, in, uh, t talking about a heliocentric universe uh, which started the scientific revolution. You had Martin Luther challenge the church which turned the church uh, into a more human institution. After the single church, you had all of these denominations, and each one sort of addressed a certain factor, a certain segment of, uh, of human experience. And, uh, there, and then Christopher Columbus uh, decided that the world was round, and in the process, hypothetically, if you want to think of it that way, discovered, or at least sort of landed on, the, on another content that they, continent that they didn't know existed. All four of those things happened within a single lifetime, within a two or three decades after Giotto liberated the human mind. Then 200 years after that, uh, Rousseau and the Enlightenment sort of intensified the whole idea of, uh, of a human-centered mind and started essentially a revolution, both figuratively and literally. I mean, <laughs> he did this around the middle of the uh, 18th century, 1750, and within 20 years, you know, the United States wrote their Declaration of Independence in which all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with inalienable rights and then, of course, the French were cutting off all the heads of the aristocrats, and the whole thing was turning into a totally different kind of world. And then 200 years after that, science had redescribed or restructured what the world was uh, by, you know, inventing quantum theory and relativity. Um, psych psychiatry and psychology sort of explored how the human mind actually works and functions within the world.
uh, there was one other thing that happened 200 years after that. But, oh, empathy. Empathy is, uh, I don't know if you know, but empathy didn't exist in the English language until 1909. And uh, that changed everything. I, you know, one of the things that happened between uh, 1949 and 1964, 49 being Pollock, uh, 56 being Jasper Johnson, 64 being Andy Warhol, is uh, they had to end humanism, not because it was a terrible thing, because it did so many incredible things, but in fact um, it caused it caused one race to think that they were the u rulers of the universe and nobody else mattered. Uh, and during that time, um, we, we were patriarchal, we were misogynistic, we were homophobic, we were xenophobic, we were racist. I mean, the list just goes on and on. And it was integrated into, into that whole business. I mean, obviously, when the forefathers of our country wrote all men are created equal, it seemed to, there was a cognitive dissonance that they didn't even consider. That maybe there's, a, there's something wrong with slavery, but you know that didn't matter because uh, they didn't matter. Uh, and so that had to stop. I mean, there was no way about it. And since 64, if you think about all the incredible things that have happened, and they are the byproduct of empathy, you know? Interracial marriage became the law of the land in 1968, I believe. Uh, we no longer chemically castrated homosexuals. Uh, women were finding their place in, 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 in the, they became citizens, well, a couple of hundred years before, no, about 50 years before that, but, but uh, that was turning around and they became more active members of the way the world functioned. I mean, everything changed. You know, in 1950 or before 1964, the idea of having an American, an African-American president was, it didn't exist. It would have never occurred to anybody because it would have never occurred. Or, you know, four women secretaries of state in a row. I mean, there was like 20 plus years where women were sort of conducting the, 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 the business of state around the world. And it wasn't until John Kerry took over that a male had, had, had stepped into play. I mean, everything has changed since 1964. And Andy Warhol being the, um, the anti, basically taking on the ethos, the, the, the malignant part of the humanist ethos, and uh, basically turning, shutting it down. You know, it's so interesting. When a culture, you know, this, I always think of, you know, big pieces of culture come in rollers. And there was the prehistoric, then there was the historic, then there was the classical, then there was the Christian, then there was the humanist. And at the end of each one of those, I call them rollers, uh, uh, it sort of played itself out and it was time for the uh, humans to find uh, another paradigm on which to determine what it meant to be a human being. Artists were the first to sort of walk away from, from the culture. I mean, the Christians definitely, with their medieval art, walked away from the classical world. And then Giotto and the 15th century artists, the Renaissance, walked away from uh, the Christian world, and then, you know, Duchamp, who was the first person to really recognize the fact that humanist culture had this malignancy uh, that was, and he, he decided he could no longer, he, first of all, he invented Dada, which was mostly iconically uh, expressed with the urinal called the fountain. Uh, he did a whole bunch of other sort of ready-made things. And then, this is one thing I find absolutely incredible. For decades, he didn't make art. He played chess, but somehow, I mean, just imagine trying to, to keep people totally aware that you weren't doing anything because he couldn't make art for a culture he couldn't believe in. And nothing 
that meant anything. It was just retinal art. Today we call that eye candy, but it's hard to think of Rembrandt and Michelangelo and Rubens and Caravaggio and all those people as eye candy, but that was what Duchamp thought, you know. And then he was sort of the prophet, and Andy Warhol was the, uh, some, he was sort of like the sacrificial lamb, you know. He was the one who, he turned his life into this uh, living theater of being the, the super anti-hero, the antithesis of, again, humanism and all the good things they did.